Welcome Blackers. to welcome to a segment of Shiftcast. Okay. This is a portion okay. of the okay. main show. You can catch it here okay. on the YouTube channel or got on it, Spotify. Let's get I'm right passing, into it. And let's just jump right oh, into it. We've got the first take from Owen, and I'm going to throw this over to Michael. LJ is the most talented player to ever play for Space Station Gaming. Who said this? Owen? Owen? Blasphemy! Blasphemy, Whoa. I say! <laughs> Blasphemy! Come on, guys. How quickly we forget. This is how bad things happen. when We forget our history because history always repeats itself. Okay? And two years ago, I was told that Daniel was the best player to ever play for Space Station. And now I'm telling that LJ and they're fantastic all-time legendary players, but they're not typical. They're just not typical. Okay? Typical <laughs> changed North American Rocket League. He was one of he was the original slow play, mechanical third man. He had glue on his car, guys. He was the he engineer, he allowed Mr. Robert Chrome Gomez to craft a style around him that never works anymore, but it worked with him because he was that special. And they won everything online for like three months. At his worst, in the absolute twilight of his career, he was the major finalist, okay? He made how many top? One, two, one, two, three, four top fours on land, okay? And Space Station, no, five top fours on land, one with Space Station. What Sipical did in North America from about season eight to the to the end to the end of season X is something in terms of pure individual ability that nobody can really say they've ever done bar six or seven players. He is absolutely he doesn't have the accolades because his primed unfortunately lined up with the global pandemic. But if that never happened, I I think we're talking about Sipical like we talk about Atomic, like we talk about Garrett G, all these all time guys who got the pinnacle he was absolutely as good as them and until lj can show me a top four on land he's not better than typical and he can't be until he gets me to a championship sunday on a land okay and there scene. you have it in scene okay uh owen you have been shot down my friend sorry uh we've got Here. take number two from koozie q o o z y i like that uh, Yins, Blast yeah, or... needs to produce an all-time great RLCS 2025 or the eSport will die. Okay, I'll first give you a fake answer and then I'll give you the real answer. Okay. All right. No, because Rock League eSports will never die. All right? That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, you heard it. Okay, now we, now we get, get to the real answer. Yes, absolutely they do. Oh yeah, they do. Of course, the first answer is not completely wrong. Rocket League Esports will always be around, but in what form? And if we want to be it, be the, have it be the product that it is today and grow it even more into the potentially tier one esports that we can all imagine it could be, then absolutely do they need to get their stuff together this year, next year. The organization needs to be this year to make it bang next year because yeah, I can even excuse having a LAN outside of France for the world's finals. I mean, almost inexcusable. But I, I can I can let it slip. But the format needs to be better. And I've heard that maybe there aren't that many changes to come, at least not next year. But I know that and this is i mean the org owners have talked about this people like organizations like carmine corp are talking to the organis the uh, team organizers talking to the tournament organizers about the format about what's going on in rlcs because kc has had it the worst uh, they felt the most what this format can do to a team like KC. They want to know that they are investing in something that's worth investing in, which is not the case at the moment. I think that's very clear to say. I'm not saying anything new here. They need to know that their investment is taken seriously and they get something in return. And oh, that's okay. something is a good format, a good circuit, a good RLCS 2025. Yeah, I think all-time great is a little bit of a is a little bit much, but I think next 
RLCS to me right now feels very directionless. It's just put the tournaments on and see what happens. I think the most important thing for next year for Blast is establish a clear direction. Where are we going? Are we going towards a completely open circuit where anyone can win any day? Or are we going to move back towards stability? And listen, if you have a plan for either, I would prefer the latter. But if, if you have a plan for the other, the you know super open stuff, at least let's do that right. Let's have a million lands. Let's have it just show up. <laughs> we'll, we don't, we'll, we'll just put it on a convention. Just show up and, and play on the PCs until someone wins. But yeah. if, if you if you want to do it smart and you want to do org security and all that good stuff, let's start moving towards that. Let's start moving towards that pseudo franchising or that that you know super duper auto qual. Like I mean, there are a lot of options out there in terms of formats, but also in terms of solving the issues at hand. It doesn't even need to be fixed by the format right this coming season. Right, they can get away with only small changes to the format from RSS 2024 if they can give a roadmap for what's to come, what kind of changes they will make into the seasons next. Uh, you know funny. what what they're actually going to do in the long term, because those organizations that they want to keep into the esports, if they want the esports to flourish are looking for that long term. They are not looking for the best RLCS 2025, the all-time great season. No. They're they're looking that for their investments to be worth something. Roadmap, so, huh? A roadmap or uh, some kind of, you know, way of getting communication. Yeah, but also I'm I'm thinking like maybe overhauling org items like the decals completely, like changing the way fans and uh, everyone playing the game can support the organizations there there needs to be something for organizations that is not there currently sure for them to stay stick around yeah whatever that is there there are really are a multitude of options here yeah all right well hootie now that we're done now, now that we're done with with serious talk let's have some fun okay let's talk about south america Mop says both Diaz and Swift will make a land next season. Doesn't say from where, but they'll be there. Mm. In classic fence sitting oh, fashion. God. Oh my God. <laughs> Somebody get this guy out of here, man. <laughs> you know what? Skip Bayless. Hold on, hold on. Let me, Skip let me, Bayless let me, is, is going to be answer, a you can get mad. If they end up on the same team they make both Ooh, okay if they are still on separate teams i think only one will make it a land mm. because i just don't see furia missing okay and i think one spot is extremely competitive we've seen throughout this uh back half of the season and sam i mean complexity's a good team and they just weren't they weren't there, you know. It's it's going to be just as difficult next season. So I think, um, you know, if they can join forces, I really, I really like those. Uh, I really like those names. I think this season was probably some really valuable experience. So if they can join forces, maybe alongside Razeball, uh, you know, something along those lines, um, and maybe we could see it happen. Damn, you but really get not, the expectations low with that fence sitting going because that's not a half bad take. It's not bad, yeah. right? It's not, yeah. but it is. It is I kind of a half and half like, answer. If they expand the format, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. no, not yeah, a half bad answer. I want to um, give you one. I want to give right. you a take. This one's from Vesper Jens. One of the invited North American Shift Summer League teams will miss the playoffs. Is that for? It's for Jens. Okay. Uh, one of the invited shift summer league teams will miss it. Oh, right. Okay, the the player. Yeah. Hmm. So that is. Let me get back to this. <clears throat> it's uh, RMC Shopify yeah. OGSS. Yeah, RMC is in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Currently, Shopify Rebellion, who were invited, right? Yep, they were. 
are looking the weakest. Um, but what? I can see what <laughs> OG. <laughs> oh, OG is in there. Oh my god, I forgot we invited them. No, um, <laughs> they, what are they, they doing are, here? They Who are those guys, honestly. Oh, gee, who did they have to play? They lost to Gen G, which I mean, it's this Gen G, but it's still that's not hey. that's not a terrible loss. Relax. Sorry. Relax. They're kind of looking on the same level as RMC still, even though Rattles Magic Cheese are looking better in the standings. They got they got reverse swept by RMC too. Like they were up to nothing. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, and they barely lose to Space Station Gaming. It's like a one goal difference in on Champions Field, and and two overtimes. So I don't think OG is looking that bad. I think that yeah, I, I think that Shopify Rebellion, even though they're above OG in the standings, are With, without potentially their worst player. I mean, well, yeah, player, but they, excuse me? Sorry, a third of a third of their season is gone. Yeah, well, but that means they have two thirds and they're 500? already in a better position than OG. They're five hundred. They're about to get I'm, two I'm, back. I'm just lost with the logic. Okay, question for you guys: If let's say Shopify do come out and they go like one five, do they put memory back in? No. <laughs> no. Are they like Unk? Unk, we need you. No, 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 no. Either way, whether it's OG or Sp Shopify Rebellion, there are multiple teams looking on the brink of losing out on that playoff spot. Yeah, yeah. So that one of them isn't going to make it is not a certainty, but a, a very, very good possibility, I would say. Yeah, if Dig keeps playing the way they're playing, one of those teams is going to miss out because there's right. only six spots. I see what Michael's done. What did I do? He has cooked this up in a way where I deliver this next take for him to uh, yeah. for him to uh, no, 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 no. You guys do this all the time where like a, a take that like <laughs> is kind of generally something I might bring up comes out and you're like, oh, well, look who once again is. It's like, I'm not thinking about this. I'm thinking about how sure, I can Michael, educate sure. and entertain our audience. This is a I'm take about, from Igorus. This is ridiculous. First killer is the only world class player on Gen G. No. No. <laughs> no. What is happening to people? What's wrong with people nowadays? This is what's wrong with society. Like <laughs> you don't you don't make top eight on land twice with one world class player. You don't. It just doesn't happen at this in this sort of climate of Rocket League. Like apparently Jack has been an elite talent in this game for three years. Why would, because they got, oh, sorry, they did, they had a season that was exactly the same as BDS. Now they only have one world-class player. How does that make any sense? They won two events, they came top eight on land twice. BDS does it, oh man, we can win a championship, we don't know, maybe they'll do this. Uh, and now all of a sudden we're hating on Jack because because uh, his team did exactly as well as Monkey Moon's team did. Like, give me a break, okay? This is a good team with good players. That's a, not even... I mean, we are hating. I mean, this take got eight upvotes and 35 downvotes, but... <laughs> I don't even sure. look at that when I do this. <laughs> I just look at the ones cooked, that I... Huh? I look, some of them are so bad, they're, it's just like, OJ is good at the game. And it's like, I got to find some. <laughs> <laughs> like, have some sort of merit point, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'll end it off with giving one a hoodie. Yep. Um, speaking of memory, week one, MVP, coach, uh, beast mode teammate. Um, this one's from GC. Memory is one of the most underrated players in RLCS history. I'm going to say yes on two accounts. Oh, my God. Number one, longevity. This is a player that I don't think people realize how long he's been at the top. And I know that he has been retired now for, I guess, what, one season, two seasons? Um, but he was around in season two, three? Like very, very, very early on. Um, and so for him to remain 
relevant and continue to play professionally into the open circuit era is something that very few players accomplished. So on the longevity front, absolutely. Secondarily, and more importantly, this guy accelerates with his stick like Rizzo. Wait, oh, actually? Really? If you play the game like that and you're a professional, you're a freaking goat. That's just That makes the so line. much sense, actually. He kind of plays like Rizzo. Okay. Not like you, Rizzo if you like are Rizzo. accelerating with your left and breaking. stick and yeah. breaking, you are a legend. I don't yeah, know how crazy. you can be a wow. professional like that. That's crazy. Can I yeah. say that I think he's kind of fairly rated? I think everyone likes memory, but he never made a land. And for most of the last two years of his career, he was like right in that, like, is am I going to make a regional close call area? I feel like it's not. I think it's fair to say he's pretty well rated. People respect him. People think he was good. Hey, but guy. Like, yeah, but that's not near as fun as talking about his longevity and his fun controller. Well, like, you, I've been playing the game. <laughs> I've played, for me. I mean, I don't really play Rocket League anymore, but I've been playing Rocket League for five years. Do you, you going to say I'm over, under, over it, underrated because of my longevity? At the what, how long at you what been level, playing? Michael? Three, at what level are you playing three, at? How long what you level been playing are you Rocket? playing at for the last five years? Um, well, I was pretty good when I was in college. That's all I'll say. Uh, but what, um, okay. Give me a, I want a couple... You know, maybe one day we'll share this on the shift. Maybe cast, a rank? Which was, Could you shout that out? What rank? I don't really pay attention to that stuff. Maybe, <laughs> but I remember, diamond? No, come on, bro. Come on. Like, <laughs> of course it's not. No. Mads. No. <laughs> no, there's I'm a not great video. It's a good rank if you want to share it. There's a great video of me. Uh, when I used to play college, I was the sub for the college, my university's Rocket League team. And then one of the kids quit like two weeks in. What was it played... called? Plat Rats? <laughs> no, we were, we were the Queen's University Rocket League team. Okay. We were in the, the we were in a college league and we played St. Clair's College, which is a really good they're like a CRL level team. And they have like a broadcast and everything. And we lost uh six one, seven one, eight one. Nice. <laughs> but I scored in all three games and they were going wild nice. for me. My in game name at that point was Cuppy of Wadi. And every time I go up, they'd be like, Cuffy's got the ball. Cuffy's got the ball. Let's go. I had a clip too. If I can find it, I like, I did like, you know, I like went off the, the sidewall thing and I hit it. And I was like, I was screaming in the comms and my teammates were like, yeah, it's like five, one dude. And I was like, let's go. Yeah, it's a yeah, ball they, if I can find it, the video, it's somewhere on there. They have like a million VODs. I'll, I will send it to you guys. You'll see. They were going crazy for Cuppy of Wadi. I was going nuts. Anyway, I, I, I don't know why we went, I went on that big tangent, but I love telling that story. Oh, you know, Michael, memories name. You're, you're also fairly rated for the last five yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody check my RL. You'll never be able to find my RL trackers. Uh, all right. Well, water, hey. you know, we're going to find it. <laughs> that is, uh, hey, that's the final take there for speed taking. Look, if y'all want to drop some takes, join the shift cord. We'll have a link below in the description. Of course, there's a link uh, below on the Twitch channel as well. Y'all make sure that you're following on the Twitch channel. We're broadcasting all the Shift Summer League matches here on uh, Shift RLE. You can check that out on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv. And folks, that's it for today. We have finished uh, Shiftcast episode five, uh, 25. Geez. Um, Cuppy of Wadi, uh, any closing thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, was, I saw Long Legs yesterday, the horror movie. Do not go see that movie. I I was so scared, dude. It was a scary movie. Um, uh, I think SSL that's tomorrow. Points. SSL tomorrow. Uh, make sure you're there. Um, get popcorn. You can Uber Eats actually popcorn from your local theater. I learned that recently. Um, that's great. Uh, great who's going to be hosting with Spaceman and Corelli? Or you can just pop it into a microwave. But yeah. it's not the if same. You're that's not a the lame same. loser. Like, come on, dude. Um, you're gonna pop it on the stove like <laughs> come on <laughs> um, <Nice. laughs> anyway um yeah it's good to be back hopefully i'll stop missing thank you for tuning in to he's low, he's low, you can catch the full episode here on the youtube channel or on spotify yeah, no, next yeah, no, time. i'm bummed i'm bummed good comes hoodie <laughs>